Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two's special series on Medicare, uh, health insurance, and uh, all of that kind of stuff, which is so important to everybody over 50, even though you may not be eligible for it until you're 65. We've been, uh, Art and I have been very pleased to present Aaron Zolrod, who is an expert, an insurance agent, licensed insurance agent, but an expert in all of this stuff because it is so important to our future. Okay, so uh, these next two episodes I'm gonna do uh, are gonna be uh, a deep dive into the pros and cons of uh, first uh, uh, supplements and then into Advantage plans. But uh, uh, Aaron, would you uh, uh, talk about if somebody has one or the other, uh, the op option to, or the uh, possibility of changing from one to the other? Because uh, I know there are a couple of different periods of times that you can do that. Yeah, so there's we, you you mentioned an open enrollment, I think, Art. Um, there's actually two enrollment periods that are important. The first that, that we know of that people are most used to is what's called annual election period. And every year that runs from October 15th to December 7th. And it's kind of a free for all. You can make chan any changes you want to your plan line up. You can go from a supplement to an advantage plan. You can go from an advantage plan to a supplement. You can change prescription drug plans, and you can do it as many times as you want in those 53 days, and the last one sticks, whichever the last application in December 7th sticks, um, and you're basically choosing your plan for the following calendar year. That's annual election period, um, 53 days, October 15th to December 7th. Then there's something that came back into play just a couple, three years ago called open enrollment. And during this, this runs from Jan, and it's it's not, this is, here's crazy. It's not advertised. For whatever reason, Medicare does not advertise this. They do not make people know it exists. I don't understand that. Um, maybe it's because of the general predatory nature of the advertisements. They're kind of limit that predatory behavior to 53 days instead of, you know, four months and change. But during annual election that runs January 1st to March 31st, you can make one like-to-like -like move. You can move from one Advantage plan to another, or you can go from an Advantage plan back to original Medicare and a supplement as well as a prescription drug plan. So there's only two things you can do. Make one like-to-like -like change or go from an Advantage plan to supplement. My understanding of this period is it was to kind of give people the chance who maybe had been scammed or maybe had second, you know, had second thoughts, or you know, was was wanted to go back and change and say, you know what, I shouldn't have made that change. I'm going to go back to what I had. That that's kind of what it was for, um, to do that. And and but it's again, it's not advertised, um, but it is a, it can be a very important tool, uh, enrollment tool. There there's a, I'm I'm going to not really get into the the specifics of it, but it it it's something that that people need to know exists. Again, January first. To March 31st, open enrollment. Okay, so now let's go deep dive into supplements. All right, so we talked about, again, the two different types of plans. Supplements, aka Medigap, been around since Medicare in 1965, practically. We love that name, Medigap. That's what they're designed to do, cover the gaps in Medicare. There's five gaps in Medicare, basically. It covers them all. Um, super easy to understand. Supplements are highly federally regulated, okay? Plans can only be purchased with letters. There's literally, for anybody who turns 65 after January 1st of 2020, there's literally only nine plans available. A, B, D, G, L, M, N, K, and G, X, okay? Nine plans. There are probably a hundred companies that sell them. N is N. We we recommend Energy. Period. That's all we recommend. Um, they don't underinsure you. They don't overinsure you. They hit that sweet spot. That's why we recommend them. We want to make it more simple. So let me just say that N is N is N, and G is G is G. No matter what company sells it. Okay. There are probably a hundred companies in the country or more that sell supplements. Some we've all heard of. Aetna. Um, AARP, Humana, Cigna, and there's others we've never heard of. Two companies that we use all the time, or two of the four companies we use, are called Medico and New Era. 
They're a company called Ellipse, Ace, um, you know, United World, Thrivent, you know, all kinds of companies. The bottom line is this, they're all created equal. If you buy N, there is no difference between letter plans sold by different company with one exception, cost. In other words, N is N is N, G is G is G. They all cover the same thing. They all give you the same access to host doctors and hospitals. The only difference between companies selling plan N is cost. When we're looking at supplements, we're looking at three things. What company starts the lowest or close to the lowest? Number two, most importantly, what companies have the best reputation of keeping rates low? Because one of the negatives of supplements is that rates are going to go up over time. So number two, we're looking for a company that's got a good reputation for keeping rates nice and steady. And then three, we want a company that's easy to work with, that if there is a problem, is an issue, we can pick up the phone for our clients and get it fixed. And so those are the criteria that, that we have for helping our clients choose supplements. Um, again, the best part about supplements, one of the best parts about supplements is the simplicity and the ease of understanding them, that we know if we have plan energy, supplement plan energy or F like you have art, that we're never going to get major bills that with plan G, the only bill we're going to get is a $226 deductible with plan N we have the same deductible and everything else is covered hundred percent. So if I have a CAT scan or an MRI or a surgery or a hospitalization or chemo or radiation or skilled nursing, things that are, could be very expensive on advantage plans or without a supplement that I'm not going to get any bills for those. And that the only other bill I'm going to get on plan N is $20 at a doctor and 50 at an emergency room. And that's it. And so we have the peace of mind of knowing we're never going to get major bills. And so that's the first benefit. One thing we love about supplements. Number two, nationwide access to doctors and hospitals. There are no networks. If a doctor or hospital takes Medicare, your supplement is good there, regardless of the name on that card. Let me just say this, guys. The name on your Medicare, Medicare supplement card means nothing. It means absolutely zero. We're going to talk about that as we go along because the insurance companies on supplements are paper pushers. That's all they are. They write checks and they send out cards and, and, and that's what they do um, is they're basically just paper pushers. You don't call a doctor up and say, do you take Medico or New Era or ARP or Humana or Cigna? It's do you take Medicare? Of course we do. Can I make an appointment? Of course you can. You show up, you give them both cards and you're good to go. And they'll know that at the facility. So we can go to your local hospitals. We can go to Sloan Kettering. We can go to Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, Johns Hopkins, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, widely considered to be the best cancer facility in the world. We can go to those places and not have any more costs out of our pocket. Um, it gives us that freedom. Um, I once had a client who ate, uh, got a bad salad. She got a rare parasite from tainted romaine lettuce. There was only two hospitals in the country that could treat her, the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic. Elon Musk had donated a piece of technology that only those two hospitals had. She went to the Cleveland Clinic, was there 115 days and lived to tell about it. If she would have had an advantage plan, she would have died because she would have not had access to go to, uh, she would not have insurance that would have paid for her to go to, to the Cleveland Clinic or the Mayo Clinic. Um, so that is important for some people that they want to have that right and to, to freedom to go anywhere they want in a you know life saving situation. So that's the second thing. The third positive of supplements and the reason why I, I think supplements are great and why I think they're worth more money is that Medicare decides what is covered. Medicare does not pay people to determine what is medically necessary or not. Medicare lets your doctor decide what the best course of treatment is. Let's your doctor say, I want you to have this MRI right now. Go back out in the lobby. We're going to get you an MRI. Read that MRI that very day and say, holy cow, we got to get you into surgery. I've got an opening in two days. Come in. Nobody second guesses that. There's no insurance company that fights it, that postpones it, that, you know, if, if your doctor thinks it's prudent for you to stay in the hospital two more days, you stay two more days. Um, and to me, that is the most important thing and why I'm a huge proponent of supplements and usually is the reason why people will uh, be willing to pay more money for not having to worry about getting the care or services um, they need. 
Uh, lastly, with supplements, one of the regulations is your benefits are locked in for as long as you have the plan. So plan N, for instance, um, you have a $226 deductible, $20 copay at a doctor or specialist and 50 at the emergency room, and that's it. If you live to be 95 years old and still have plan N, your copay will still be $20 at a primary or specialist, still be 50 at the emergency room, and there never can be any more added. That's the only copays you're ever going to have. Um, the, and the deductible. Now, that deductible is the one thing that can change. It does go up, but it doesn't go up a whole lot. I'm predicting the deductible is going to be 350 to 410 years, which is a drop in the bucket compared to what most people have. You know, I have a $1,500 deductible on my plan. Most people have $2,500 deductibles or $1,500. So $350, is nothing, but but that's the only thing that can change. So again, we have the peace of mind knowing that now and in the future, I'm never going to be inundated with bills. You know, if I'm going through cancer, do I, I don't want to walk to the mailbox every day and go, oh my gosh, what bill is going to come today? And with a supplement, I don't have to worry about it. We know that there are no bills going to come. And if they do come, our clients will pick up the phone and call us and say, Aaron, you told me I wasn't supposed to get any bills and we'll make a phone call and fix it. Okay. Negatives of supplements are very few. Um, the negative, the, the one negative is they're more expensive than Advantage plans. Okay, they tend to start at around $70, depending on what state you're in. And, you know, in places like California and Florida, where, where real estate's more expensive, the supplements tend to be more expensive. They're going to increase as you get older. There's no doubt about that. I talked about living to 95 years old. If you do, you're going to be paying, you know, anywhere between $250 to $450 or $500 a month for your supplement. So that is indeed a negative. They are going to increase as you get older. They're gonna become especially more expensive when you get into your 80s. From 65 to, to 80, they really are very reasonable. It's when you get into that 80s that the, that the, 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 you know, the increases can kind of come in chunks and doesn't take long before you're in that you know, 250, 350, $400 range. So that's the negative. Another negative, and one of the reasons why Advantage plans are so popular, with supplements, there is no cosmetic vision, dental, or hearing, okay? No, no cleanings, crowns, root canals, fillings, dentures, no hearing aids, routine hearing exams, no routine eye exam, or glasses covered. So people on supplements generally have to um, pay that out of their own pocket. That is a, um, actually, episode seven is going to talk about, uh, you know, what do people on supplements do about dental and vision, but generally they pay as you go. And so people don't like that. They, 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 they want some of that coverage and supplements don't provide that. Number three, negative. Supplements also don't come with prescriptions, just like original Medicare. So we've got to purchase what's called a standalone prescription plan that has a cost of between five and even $80, depending on what medications you're taking. So in addition to what we're paying in premium for our supplement, there's going to be additional premium for a Part D plan and most Part D plans have a $505 deductible on tiers three, four, and five medications. So before I get my medication covered on a copay basis, I have to pay the first $505 out of my pocket for tiers three, four, and five, which are generally brand name meds. Um, so that's an additional cost that you don't have with Advantage plans. And we talked about medical underwriting. I think in the last two or three episodes, we've talked about how supplements can be medically underwritten. Meaning, if you don't take a supplement when you first turn 65, you basically have six months from the month you turn 65 or the month you first got Part B. That's the six months window where supplements have to accept you regardless of your health, both present and past. In 42 states, that's the only time somebody can get a supplement without going through that medical underwriting process. Medical underwriting consists of a series of medical questions. The insurance company is going to ask you, have you ever had lymphoma, an autoimmune disorder, an organ transplant? Have you, do you have AFib? You know, those things. If you can't answer those questions, no, they won't take you. Okay. And so that is a negative. They're, they're, they're medically underwritten. So if you choose to go on an Advantage plan first and want to come back, um, some, for some people, it's just impossible. Um, and so, so that is uh, another um, negative of the supplement. But, you know, again, if you're educated, if you're informed correctly, you know, I'd say probably 85% of people we meet 
turning 65 for the first time or getting Part B for the first time because they worked after their 65th, those people in their first choice usually take supplements. That tends to be, when it's explained correctly, they take supplements. When it's not explained correctly, sometimes, you know, those people pass that opportunity up. But those are the, those are the pros and cons of supplements. Hmm. That's it's a really important information because as you've talked about in the past, um, you have a number of clients that are on supplements and a number of clients that are on advantage plans. And it really comes down to what's right for them and their particular situation. So um, even though to me that supplement plan sounds great based on the pros and cons, I'm looking forward to when you talk to uh, talk about the pros and cons of the advantage plan. Right. Because we need to compare things. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's some people, John, that just can't afford a supplement, right? I mean, you know, I'm in Fayette County, Pennsylvania. We're the second poorest county in the state. Okay. Very blue collar, you know, people worked in the coal mines, the Coke, you know, Coke ovens, um, you know, just blue collar. They, 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 they didn't have a 401k. They didn't have a pension. You know, they're living on social security. Um, those people can't afford supplements. And, 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 and that's why advanced plans are very, very important. There's other people that would just say, you know what? I know what the risks are, but I'm willing to take some risk because I'm going to save a hundred bucks a month and get all this extra benefit. And, and, and I'm, you know, but there's so many others that just didn't get the explanation and they're just kind of throwing darts. And so let's hold, um, let's you know, hold on to the advantage plans, which we'll deep dive in the next episode. But uh, could you just take literally a, uh, a couple of minutes? Uh, I know that you're a big fan of the N and G uh, uh, mm -hmm. supplement plans, but for the rest of the alphabet soup, for instance, I have uh, F, F. Uh, which we've, uh, we, you and I have spoken about uh, uh, the first time we met. Uh, can you yeah. say, should anybody be taking A to F and any of the other alphabet things? I, uh, I don't think so. Energy, energy. And what, what about those of us who are there? Should we try to switch to energy? Yes, 100%. Nobody should have F anymore, F or C. And F or C were eliminated for sale because they were a ripoff part. Um, in other words, the only thing that F does that G doesn't is cover a $226 deductible. And we're meeting people that are paying $2,500 more in premium a year than G or, F or N, and all they're getting in return is $226 paid. And so that's why they were eliminated for sale. Medicare, about eight years too late, said, wow, this isn't right that, you know, people are paying $2,500 and only getting a $226 benefit. Um, and so they eliminated it for sale. Yes, my, my, it, I'm huge on G. We, we don't, I mean, huge on N. We hardly even write Plan G anymore because we're also concerned that Plan G is going to be the new F and new C and that people are going to be paying $2,000 a year more for it. And all they're getting in return is the elimination of a $20 copay at a doctor. Um, and so we are, we are, you know, my advice, if you read my columns is if you can leave F, C or G and get into N, you need to do it. And you need to do it now while you can still pass underwriting. The good news for you, Art, in California is you can switch in, in any time. You, well, not any time. You can switch the month of your birthday and there's no underwriting on supplements. So you can go ahead and switch and not and not have to worry about them asking any medical questions. They automatically will take you. Excellent. So I could. So what I should do is uh, uh, come close to my birthday. Can, do you do that, or is that something yeah, that I? I can do that. Yep, because I'm licensed in California now. Yep, Great. I sure can. Okay. I would so, love for you to be my first California client. Well, we'll be talking uh, probably in uh, let's see, a couple of months now. Sounds good. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.